All right, today we're going to show a bed bug job, and this is your typical bedroom that we find. Uh, the first thing when we walk into a room and a homeowner has bed bugs is the first thing we look at is the headboard. And what stands out on this headboard is those beads that go all the way around that headboard because each one of those beads is going to have to be dry steamed. We don't put any pesticides on the, on the headboard at all. It is dry steamed. So that's the first thing that stands out about this room that currently has a bed bug infestation. The second thing that I notice walking into the room is the pictures, the two pictures above the headboard. Bed bugs will get behind there on that paper material on the back side, especially if it's coming off, and you will find bed bugs and their eggs in there. So that area will be dusted. We don't put any steam on there. We don't put any pesticide on there. We simply dust that. The next thing I notice walking in is the outlet, right, the phone jack right there next to the bed. We basically take that platelet cover off and we dust inside there. Bed bugs like a warm area and any type of outlet or phone jack area is the perfect temperature for bed bugs to nest in and to harborage in. So what we do is take that cover off and we dust that. The next thing I look for is the door stop right there with that closet door. Now that where the door stop is is another perfect area for bed bugs to get into. So we will dry steam that and we will also apply diatomaceous earth in there. The next thing that we do and that, we, that I look for is the carpet area behind the headboard. The carpet tack and the, behind the baseboard is another common area where we find bed bugs, bed bug eggs, bed, bed bug nymphs. So we take the carpet off the carpet tack, we will dry steam that area, and we will follow it up with diatomaceous earth. And of course we put the carpet back and never know we were there. Keeping in mind that bed bugs, as far as they venture from the bed on average, is five to seven feet. So that's what you're looking for is any perfect harborage areas within five to seven feet of that bed. So that nightstand or the dresser on the other side of the bed over there, each individual drawer has to be taken out, steamed, and inside the dresser itself has to be steamed. We'll then flip that dresser upside down, dry steam underneath it, and also dry steam the back side of it. The lamp that's sitting on there has to be dry steamed as well. We constantly find bed bugs and the lamp shade. Keeping in mind that bed bugs, their perfect harborage area, they want a surface so tight that both their back and their stomach is both touching a surface. So they want very, very tight quarters. All right, the curtain over there, the thing that draws the attention to me is that curtain touching the carpet right there where bed bugs can simply climb right up that curtain and get up into the curtain rod itself at the top or you can see the little ruffles in the curtain which is perfect harborage area as well because those quarters inside those ruffles is going to be tight enough where they can nest but the curtain rod we will dry steam and if we find any signs of bed bugs in the curtains we will steam that area if there's no signs of uh, bed bugs in the curtain we'll simply inspect that curtain rod and possibly dry steam that and apply some diatomaceous earth on the curtain rod in certain crevices all right, here Josh is inspecting the design on the top of the mattress, keeping in mind bed bugs like tight quarters, so they'll get down into the tiniest of crevices. So this design that is on this particular mattress is perfect for bed bugs to lay eggs in. So that's what he's looking for on the design. After he gets done inspecting all of that, he will then move to the fringe along the outside of the mattress, looking on the top side and on the underside looking for bed bug evidence. Now bed bug evidence can be their skin, they do molt five times, it can be blood stains, obviously uh, they do excrete blood. Um, so that's what he's looking for all the way around the top side of the mattress. Once he gets done with the top side, we flip the mattress over, the exact same thing on the underside. And you cut that. All right, on this particular mattress here, you see the homeowner has a bed skirt. Now the bed skirt is touching the carpet. So on, on this home, on this room, we would advise the homeowner to remove the bed skirt for at least a period of 90 days or until we declare the room bed bug free. Because as you can see on the bed skirt, there are lots of harborage areas for bed bugs. 
All right, here Josh is inspecting the box spring, again, looking at the fringe, looking for signs of bed bugs, going all the way around the top and on the underneath side of the fringe. After he completely inspects that, our main concern on the box spring is what we call the corner protectors. Uh, all box spring has these corner protectors on. What we do is we will simply remove the corner protectors. Uh, we will staple them back on. But as you can see how tight that is, it is a perfect bed bug harborage area. Here you can see the bed frame area. Now this is a critical area on your inspection. Anywhere where two metals come together, anywhere where there is a weld, anywhere where there are screws or bolts, are perfect harborage area for bed bugs. The supports were right here where he's inspecting the wheel, again, a perfect area for bed bugs to harborage. You really have to take your time inspecting the bed frame area. This will entirely be dry steamed. We will apply diatomaceous earth and that will be the treatment for the bed frame itself. Now once we get done treating the bed frame area, we will then put what climb ups under all the supports. So after we get done treating your bed area, there's no way for bed bugs to, to get to you at night. All right, now we have dry steamed and treated the bed frame area and what we're showing here are the climb ups that we put under all supports. Now that channel on the outside is lined with talcum powder. No pesticide at all, just talcum powder and it almost acts like a skating rink to bed bugs that when they climb up into the climb up and fall into that channel they cannot get out. It is a great way to monitor bed bugs but after we get done treating the entire room and casing the mattress and the box spring, there is no way for bed bugs to get to a client after the treatment. All right, here we are dry steaming the bed frame area itself. And this is dry steam, not wet steam. And you can see Josh treating all crevices throughout the bed frame area. And you can see how extensive this process is. Alright, we got that. Here's the back side of the picture that we talked about in the beginning. Uh, Josh is pointing out all the perfect harbor areas for bed bugs. And as you can see on the back side of this particular picture, there are a lot. We will dust this. We will not use any dry steam, uh, no pesticide here. It'll just be dusted uh, with diatomaceous earth. All right, here is the box spring fully encased. Now, the, enca the only encasements that Breda recommends is protect the bed. Uh, these size encasements for a queen size box spring and mattress cost anywhere from $125 to $150 uh, to encase them. But a lot of homeowners will panic and throw out their box spring and mattress when they have bed bugs. There's no need to do that because you go out and get a new mattress and box spring and they'll simply infest that. This is the easier, cheaper solution to simply encase it. It's a microfiber, it's completely washable, and it will last you a long time. 
but it prevents bed bugs from escaping the box spring or the mattress or from bed bugs ever infesting your mattress or box spring in the future. All right, here's the underside of the nightstand, the dresser that was beside the bed. Now this particular one has four legs on it that just so happen you can unscrew them. It is critical that you unscrew the legs if you can to inspect and to treat. And as you can see, that is a perfect harbage area for bed bugs.